So are you in the market for a 70 to 200 lens? Well, let me give you a good alternative. I got the Tamron 70 to 180 lens here to review for you today. I'm gonna give you the pros and the cons of what this lens can offer. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video as I'm gonna tell you who this lens is for. And that video is coming up next. All right, guys, today we're gonna to talk about the Tamron 70 to 180 millimeter F2.8 lens for your Sony full frame camera. This lens is a telephoto lens that has a zoom reach of 70 millimeters all the way up to 180. It also has an F2.8 aperture. It is gonna be really good in low light while giving you beautiful images. This lens completes the Tamron Trinity of zoom lenses. They came out first with the 28 to 75 millimeter F 2.8 lens. And that lens remains one of the best selling lenses for Sony full frame cameras. They then came out with the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter F 2.8, more of a vlogging lens or a wide angle lens. That lens is perfect if you're somebody who is generally shooting a lot of vlogs. That 28 to 75, that's kind of more your all purpose standard zoom lens. This lens, completes the Trinity. It is your telephoto lens, and this thing is great at long distances. So 70 to 180 millimeters, that's where this lens shines. Now this lens is not anything fancy. It's kind of plasticky construction. It does have a weather gasket on it on the bottom, so it is gonna provide you with some dust and weatherproofing. It does have a lock switch, so this way it doesn't have any lens creeping. It's not really, I mean, this thing is pretty tight, so I don't I don't see it having a lot of lens creep. It is there if you need it. It's got this really thick zoom ring, so it makes it really easy to zoom in and out. But one of the things that is really weird is that the focus ring is on the back, just like the other two lenses. But let's be completely honest, more than likely, you bought a Sony camera because of the great autofocus that it provides. And with a good autofocus means that do you really need to use manual focus in most of your shots? Normally, you're gonna be using like that tap the track feature that most new Sony cameras have. Now this thing does have a 67 millimeter filter thread on it and it's got a really nice piece of glass. If you need an ND filter, you're gonna to wanna to get a 67 millimeter filter. Now what I am gonna do is I'm gonna throw this on the camera. We're gonna shoot it at 70 millimeters and then I'm gonna try if I have enough room to back it up and shoot it at 180 millimeters. We'll see how this works, but I'm gonna go ahead, switch it over right now in three, two, one. All right, so we're back here at 70 millimeters. This thing is really far away now. Now, the reason why you can hear me so well is because I do have the microphone boom just out of the shot and I have a very long cord running to this camera. This is not the ideal setup that you wanna be shooting at. I wanna give you what the image is gonna look like coming out of this camera at 70 millimeters. Definitely don't have enough room to back this thing up to 180 millimeters, but this is the image quality you can expect to receive out of this lens. Now, I did use this lens for a two-day conference that I had at work. And this lens worked out great during this conference. Now I had it normally zoomed in at about 135 millimeters. I thought the lens did it exceptionally well. The tap to focus worked really great. And the touch tracking on my Sony a7C did a fantastic job of tracking the subject no matter where they move. You can totally use this thing as a great production camera from long distances. This lens is a tank. It's pretty heavy. It comes in at 1.8 pounds or 810 grams. So it's gonna be a very thick, heavy lens. And and that's not a problem because sometimes thick and heavy glass is better, especially when there's no optical lens stabilization. So this lens has no stabilization built in. You are gonna be relying on your camera's stabilization to really do everything, all the heavy lifting. And to be completely honest with you, it does an okay job. It's not gonna give you super smooth, buttery, crisp, easy shots. Nope, not coming out of this lens. So to be honest with you, this lens works great on a tripod. Like I said, shooting long distances straight down is where this lens is gonna shine. As you can see here at 70 millimeters, I think the image is really good. Now, if you have one of the new Sony cameras with gyro stabilization, you can always use the gyro stabilization to help smooth out the image even more. The downside with the gyro stabilization is it is going to crop into your lens a little bit further. I would just recommend shooting wider than you need if you're gonna use that gyro stabilization. Now, again, the aperture starts at f2.8 and it goes all the way up to f22. For longer distances, you are gonna want to increase that aperture because the further you are away from your subject, the shallower that depth of field becomes. F2.8 is great for like portraits and for things where people are not gonna be moving, like 
like this type of video. The downside is though, is you don't want like your nose and your mouth and your eyes to be in focus, but then your ears are out of focus and you got that like kind of fuzzy ear effect. So I don't like that. Hopefully I'm currently shooting at F4. Hopefully I don't have that going on right now. Now let's talk about cost. This lens is a budget lens. It's gonna come in at 1200 bucks. As far as zoom lenses that are telephoto that's 70 to 200 ish range, this lens is definitely gonna be budget friendly. So before I get to why this lens is so much more budget friendly than the next lens, it's direct competitor that I'm gonna talk about. What I'd like to do is introduce myself. My name's Brian, the camera guy. On my channel, I review Sony cameras and their lenses. If that's something you're into, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you don't miss out on my future videos. And if you're finding value in this video, do me a favor, smash that like button and comment down below. Are you thinking about picking up this lens? Now, let's get to what the direct competition is to this lens. Now again, this is a budget version of that kind of 70 to 200 range. Now Sony just came out with a 70 to 200 version two. It's an F 2.8 and this lens is gonna be fantastic. Hands down, it's gonna be better than the 70 to 180. But my question to you is, is how often are you gonna be shooting 70 to 180? Is it a lens that you're gonna be using all the time? Then maybe upgrading to that version two Sony lens is going to be a better option. What features does that lens have that this one does not. It does have OSS, the optical steady shot. By what I've seen is that that steady shot is really good compared to having no steady shot and relying only on IBIS. And it is a really good upgrade from the Mark One. Now that lens is a 70 to 200. This is a 70 to 180. So are you gonna miss that 20 millimeters? I don't think you will. I question how often you're gonna actually be shooting at 180 or 200 millimeters. If you're shooting at that, you're probably shooting something really far away and 20 millimeters is probably not gonna make that big of a difference. Now, if you have a Sony full frame camera, which is what this lens is meant for, you can always punch into super 35 mode or use clear image zoom. If you use that, then this lens is gonna turn into somewhere around a 270. And then if you use clear image zoom on top of it, you're gonna get somewhere in the neighborhood like 400 how much reach do you need this thing is going to take you all the way out to 400 with clear image zoom and super 35 that 20 millimeters you're not going to miss it now what you will miss if you do pick up that 70 to 200 sony is you're going to miss a ton of cash because that thing is coming in at 2800 dollars. this is a 1200 dollars budget option versus 2800 that's 1600 dollars. that's a lot of money you could get yourself a second body for that price tag you can pick up a sony a7c for almost the same price as you're going to be dropping on the extra lens the question is is do you really need everything that lens has to offer because again how serious are you about telephoto videography now for portraits and for still images this lens is going to be hands down fantastic so before i get to who i think this lens is for i'm going to go ahead let you know that there are some affiliate links down in the description below. Those links do not cost you anything to use. So if you are interested in purchasing this lens, please definitely check out those links down in the description below. Now, who's this lens for? Well, this lens, in my opinion, is for somebody who might be shooting video for weddings. So you can be really far back and you can go ahead and get some fantastic video images from way far back. So you can capture that intimate ceremony up tight, up close with this lens. Again, this is gonna be a great portrait lens. Generally 85 or 135 is gonna be the sweet spot for portrait work. 70 to 180, you got yourself covered. It's gonna make the image, the face, look really nice. This is also going to be for anybody who is looking to shoot some sort of conference or something where you need a lot of reach. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to like the video on the screen right now about another lens for your Sony system. Go ahead and click on that video and I'll see you on that one next. Before you leave, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Brian, out. You're way far away.